In 60 seconds or less, here's what you need to know about Amazon FBM. Fulfilled by Merchant is a fulfillment method in which sellers list their products on Amazon, but manages all storage, shipping, and customer support themselves or through a third-party fulfillment center. The benefits include lower storage cost, as you can store inventory for free in your own home, or even hire a company that offers better pricing compared to Amazon. You'll also have more control over your inventory, because unlike Amazon, some companies allow you to store as much or as little inventory as you need without charging long-term storage fees. You'll also have more control over your packaging since you can ship orders in your own custom branded packaging. This will help you stand out from your competitors and create a better brand experience with your customers. And with FBM, you can set up multi-channel fulfillment and ship orders to your customers, whether they're buying from Amazon, Walmart, eBay, or even your own Shopify store. So as you can see, selling on Amazon using FBM can be more lucrative and flexible than FBA. Now, if I'm being completely honest, with FBM, there's a lot you need to know, especially if you're doing this at home by yourself without a fulfillment center. That's why we've broken this video down into four easy to follow steps for doing it at home. But real quick, if you're just wanting to outsource everything to a third-party fulfillment center, a few good options you can choose from are A to B Fulfillment, ShipBob, ShipMonk, and Red Stag Fulfillment. Now, those are just a few of the options out there, so make sure you do your own research. Also, it's worth noting that this is not a sponsored video, so if you do learn anything new today, please let us know by smashing that like button down below. Hey, Lenny. <laughs> what are you doing here? Just swung by to ask a question. How do you create FBM listings? <laughs> well, Lenny, <laughs> there are three ways that you can do this. The first way is to add a brand new product on Amazon and set it to FBM. The second two ways are if you already have FBA listings in your account. Then you could either change your listing to FBM only, and this would be great if you no longer want to use FBA, although you can always just change it back in the future. Or the other way you could do this is by creating a new offer so that you have both FBA and FBM listings. That way, if you ever run out of your FBA inventory, instead of losing out on potential sales, your listing will automatically switch over to FBM. To do this, log into Seller Central and go to the inventory menu. From here, select Manage Inventory. Locate your product, and then from the drop-down menu, select Add Another Condition. This will bring up a new offer page, and all you have to do now is enter a unique SKU number, set your price, the condition of your product, then make sure to change the fulfillment channel to Merchant Fulfilled. After that, enter the available units you have in inventory. But if you haven't already ordered your inventory yet, don't worry, you can just enter any number and then come back later and update it. Now, if you don't already have products listed on Amazon, then you'll need to create a brand new listing. Thankfully, listing an FBM product is, in many ways, the same as creating any other product offer. You just click Catalog, then Add Products. Next, if you're doing wholesale, dropship, or retail arbitrage, search for your product by typing in the product name, UPC, or ASIN. Find your product, select if you're selling it new or used, and click Sell This Product. Now, if you're doing private label, you want to click I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon. Then select your category. Now you can begin the process of building out your listing. The first thing you need to do is change the fulfillment channel to FBM. To do that, click Offer, and then come down to the Fulfillment Channel section. Then simply switch it to I will ship this item myself. After that, enter the condition of the product, and then how many available units you have in inventory. And again, if you haven't already ordered your inventory yet, you can just enter any number and then move on to the next field. Once you've filled out all the vital information highlighted in red, click Save and Finish. Now, if you need more help building out your listing, we have a full video walking you through the entire process. So make sure you check out that video up here and we'll also put a link down in the description. You're still here. Yeah, I, I had another question. Okay. How do you ship your products with FBM? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So first you need to update your shipping settings. And ideally, you wanna have these updated right after you list your product. To do this, navigate to the settings icon, then click shipping settings. From here, click general shipping settings. If you need to update your home address, click edit, and then add new address. Fill this out with your information and then click save. Next, click to edit your order fulfillment settings. This is where you can set specific order cutoff times. To put it simply, each order you receive before the order cutoff time is expected to be packed and shipped within one to two days, depending on the handling time you select. 
Because of the time you'll need to manually pack and label each order, it's best to give yourself as much time as possible by choosing the earliest option, which in this case is 2 p.m. One thing to keep in mind is that you'll most likely be using a local postal service, like USPS for example. So just make sure to keep in mind when they close each day. Scrolling down, you'll notice you have a few weekend options. Now it's worth noting by default, only Monday through Friday are considered mandatory operating days. So unless you were to update these settings, you don't need to worry about fulfilling orders over the weekend. However, if you do decide to change this, these days will be considered towards the calculation of the estimated ship date. That is, you will be required to ship out orders on Saturday and Sunday. Once you're happy with your settings, click save. Now, going back to the shipping settings, click here to edit your handling time. On Amazon, handling time is the time between when a buyer places an order until you have to pack and hand that order over to your shipping carrier. By default, Amazon gives you two days, but if you think you can do it in one, you can change that here. This is important because Amazon provides the total estimated delivery time to shoppers on your listing and at checkout. As an FBM seller, it's helpful to know that your estimated delivery time is calculated with the following formula. Essentially, the shorter your handling time, the faster customers can expect to receive your products. And on Amazon, we know that customers love fast shipping. However, in the case that you do need more than two business days, you can always add additional handling time by going back to the inventory menu and selecting Manage Inventory. Click to edit your product and then click Offer. From here, make sure to select More Attributes and then scroll down to the Handling Time section. Then simply enter the number of days you'll need. Coming back to this page, you can also enter a custom order handling capacity. This will allow you to set the maximum number of orders you can reliably ship out each day. Once this limit is reached, products with one and two day handling time will be extended to the next available shipping day. This is just to ensure that you're protected from a surge of orders that might result in delayed shipments. Okay, so coming back, you just updated all of your general shipping settings. The next step here is very important, and that's to set up your delivery preferences. This is where you determine what shipping options are available, what you charge for shipping, what areas you can ship to, and how fast. To do this, click Create a New Shipping Template, then click OK. The first step is to select your address. The second step is to select your fulfillment type. However, the second option is currently unavailable to sellers, so as of right now, you can only choose the Seller Fulfilled option. One quick note on this. Seller Fulfilled Prime is a program that allows you to display the Amazon Prime badge on your listing and deliver products directly to Prime customers. However, because Amazon is not accepting any further applications for this program, sellers that are interested in joining will just have to add their names to a waiting list on the website. Back to the shipping template. This next step here is to select the shipping services that you're going to use to fulfill your orders. Keep in mind to only select the services that you can use, and typically, those are gonna be the ones that are closest to where you live. After you do that, Consider how you want Amazon to choose which shipping service to use to fulfill your orders. The first option here is to let Amazon select the shipping service with the longest delivery time. And typically, this will be the cheapest option for you. Or if you'd like, you can always choose this second option and set a preferred order from this list that you selected above. Simply drag and drop the shipping services you wanna prioritize up to the top and vice versa. Drag the ones you don't wanna prioritize down towards the bottom. Then once you're happy, Click next. This next section here is only available to sellers that meet the requirements for premium shipping. This allows you to provide faster shipping options, but the requirements for it are pretty strict. So if you're curious about this program, just search online for Amazon premium shipping requirements to see the full list. If you have this option available, you can just use the same shipping services you selected earlier. On this next page, review that everything is correct and then click confirm. Now this will bring you to the final page here where you can enter a name for your shipping template. Next, the rate model section is how you set your shipping rates. There are two options. You can either charge by product or by the weight of your product, or the second option lets you charge by the total price amount that the customer orders. Scrolling down, this next section is where you can edit your transit time by region. So for example, with free economy shipping, these are the regions you're able to ship your products to customers within four to eight days. If you need more time, you can always adjust this time frame with the drop down menu here. Now, if there are other regions you can technically ship your products to, but they'll just take more time to arrive, you can click this button to create a new shipping rule. Select the regions you want to ship to and then click OK. Then just make sure to increase your transit time. The next few sections below are for setting up your shipping rates by region. 
Just keep in mind the shipping fees you put here will reflect on your listing as an additional shipping charge that the customer pays for. Now, with standard shipping, in order to be competitive with other sellers, it's usually a good strategy to offer free shipping to the US or whatever country you're selling in. However, since it's usually more expensive to ship with expedited two or even one day delivery, it makes a lot of sense to charge an additional shipping fee. You can also do this for international orders down here at the bottom. Then once you're all done, click save. Now, real quick, you'll wanna make sure to assign your products to the shipping template you just created. To do that, head over to the inventory menu and click manage inventory. Once you find your product, click the edit dropdown menu and select change shipping template. On this next page, use this dropdown menu to select your shipping template and then, then click continue. What are you doing? Oh, sorry, force of habit. I did have another question though. What happens when you receive an FBM order? Okay, yeah, well, there's actually two answers to this. First, you can ship your products using Amazon's buy shipping feature. And I'll be showing you how to do that in just a moment. Or you could also just use your local postal service, just like you would with any other type of shipping. However, in my opinion, the best way is by using Amazon's buy shipping feature. How this works is Amazon will offer you their best shipping rates per your packaging requirements. And they'll also supply you with the shipping labels as well. Your shipping fees will be automatically deducted from your Amazon balance. So you don't actually have to worry about paying for this upfront. Because buy shipping uses Amazon's own transportation data, this is by far the easiest way to ensure that your orders are both on time and have tracking numbers. And that's really important because Amazon does require all of your orders to have tracking numbers. So by using this feature, tracking numbers will automatically be generated and sent to your customers. Let me show you how to do this. Head over to the orders menu, then select manage orders. We're now in the unshipped orders page. And as you can see, we have an order that was placed 19 hours ago for someone by the name of Leonard. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. Now, as you can see, this customer purchased only one product with standard shipping. So in order to deliver this product by their expected delivery date, you'll need to pack and ship it out by the ship by date. To do that, click buy shipping. On this next page, you can start by confirming a few options. You can confirm your ship from address and then confirm the date you're going to ship out this order. If for some reason you do need more time to ship, you can always select one of these other dates, but just know doing that will push back the customer's expected delivery date. The next step here is to enter your packaging dimensions. So for example, let's say our product fits inside a box that's 16 inches by 12 inches and is also 12 inches tall. We'll enter that and click apply. Next, we'll enter the weight of our product and we can do that in either pounds or ounces. After that, you'll now be able to see what shipping service you can use and your shipping price. Because we set up our shipping template earlier to prioritize the cheapest shipping option first, in this case, that's UPS ground. But if we wanted to, we could click to see all the available options and pick another shipping service from the list here. You'll notice that each shipping service has its own estimated delivery date and price. But as you can see, in our case, UPS ground is not only the cheapest option, but it also has the fastest delivery time. So that actually works out great. Backing out, one more thing we can do is click this button to select our label orientation. Typically, this first option will work just fine, but if you need any other size, you can always choose one from the list here. Also, if your product is valued at over $100, it's best to declare your product value in this section here. Otherwise, all it's left to do now is click buy shipping. This will confirm your order and display your shipping label. Simply download and print out this label, attach it to your box, then head over to your local shipping service. And in our example, this is UPS. So that's how you ship FBM products using Amazon's buy shipping feature. Do you have to be doing this right here? I'm sorry, you want some? <sighs> I mean, yeah. Um, first, tell me, what do you do if a customer returns their product? Okay, yeah. Um, well, first you just have to remember that as an FBM seller, you are responsible for handling your own returns. And unfortunately, returns aren't optional. So as long as a customer makes the request within the return window, you will have to accept it. Now, when you do eventually get a return, here's what you need to know. Return policies can vary, but you must at least adhere to Amazon's 30 day return window. Returns will be sent to your address and you're responsible for providing buyers with a prepaid return label. If you fail to offer any of these, the buyer can file an A to Z guarantee claim to get Amazon's assistance with the return and that can negatively impact your account health. So to help you successfully process returns, here are the steps you can take. First, when you get a return request, 
you'll receive an email notification. However, if you didn't get that email, you probably just need to update your return settings. To do that, go to the orders menu and then click manage returns. From here, click edit return settings. On this next page, make sure this first box is checked so that you can receive return request emails. Scrolling down, there are some other settings that you can review as well, but for the most part, everything here selected is already pretty standard. Just make sure you click save settings. Next, click return program settings. And personally, this is where I like to set free returns for all my items, rather than having the customer pay for it themselves. Now, this is completely up to you and you may not want to offer free returns, especially if your products are large and therefore expensive to ship back. You can also click up here to add a new rule. This might be helpful. For example, if you want to increase your return window to let's say 60 days, you can also make this rule apply to only products within a certain price range or just within a certain category. You can even make this rule apply only to customers that select one of the approved reasons why they're returning the product. Now, one more thing to do here is to confirm your return address settings. If you're doing this from home, make sure your address is listed here. Otherwise, click this button to change it. Okay, now that your return settings are updated, this is how you would process a product return. When you receive a return, just like this, you're given two options. You can either contact the buyer or issue a refund. If you think you can resolve the issue within a direct conversation, contacting the buyer is your best option. Here, you can send them an email attempting to resolve their issue before processing the return. You may even get lucky and receive a positive response back from the buyer who may have just misunderstood how to use your product and is willing to give it another shot. However, unless it's an extremely unreasonable return request, it's sometimes best to just accommodate the customer's return request. To do that, click issue refund. On this next page, you have a few additional options to choose from. Here, you can see the total amount that is being refunded. And this comes from adding up both the products tax and the shipping costs that the customer originally paid for. However, unless you check this box here, that amount won't include the shipping cost. Below that, you can also choose to select this box and charge the customer the full price of the product. Alternatively, you could even add an additional amount to be refunded to the customer. Now, once you're satisfied with all the return details, click Submit Refund. And listen, I know it can be very hard clicking that button, but try not to worry too much about returns because honestly, they'll only ever play just a tiny part in your Amazon business. Plus, as an FBM seller, you have a ton of other perks that not even FBA sellers can compete with. Quite possibly the greatest perk of them all is that you can increase your profit by storing your own inventory at, at a, a fraction, fraction of the cost of what Amazon charges. I mean, do you just wanna do this video? No, 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 you're doing great. That, that was my favorite section yet. Just just one teensy tiny little question. Okay. How do you store your own inventory? <sighs> okay, yeah. Well, if you're doing this at home and you have an extra room available, such as an office or garage area, that's gonna be a great place to start. Of course, this will depend on the size of your product and how many units you need to store. But another way that you can make this work is by renting a small local storage unit. You can choose to have only a few units in your home and then have the rest of your inventory in that storage unit. Either way, you're going to need a proper system in place to keep track of all of your inventory. That's because with FBM, it's very important to understand how much inventory you have, what it cost, when you ordered it, and when you need to reorder more to avoid going out of stock. This is why I strongly recommend investing in an inventory tool. A great one out there that's designed specifically for Amazon sellers is the Jungle Scout Inventory Manager. It syncs directly to your Seller Central account, and after adding your product cost, it automatically keeps track of your available inventory. You can see how much it cost, the date you should reorder, how many units you'll need, what that will cost, and even the expected profit of selling all of your inventory. So if you'd like to see a full tutorial of how it works, make sure you watch this next video to see the Inventory Manager in action. Thank you so much for watching. I'll, I'll see you in, in the, the next, next video. video. I'm gonna leave. What? Well, I'm in the next video. Amateurs. Hey, Lenny. <laughs> what are you doing here? I, uh, <laughs> I forgot my line. I did have another question though. How do you figure out what your question is? <laughs> what? Since you can pick in ah, without a, th ah. <laughs>